So an entire episode was dedicated towards the epilogue of recreators. In all honesty, that's actually very rare. I've seen a lot of anime over the years, and a lot of anime tend to not dedicate an entire episode for, like, the after story. Usually when a series ends, they give you maybe two to four minutes of, like, the after story slash epilogue after the credit scene, and that's basically it. So it's really surprising to see an entire episode actually dedicated to the epilogue to give a little bit of closure to the series. So... FYI, if you're unaware, this is the final episode of Recreators. No more. So when next week rolls around, when Saturday gets here, there will not be a new episode of Recreators to look forward to because the series is done. Now, with the finale, I'm just going to quickly state the conclusion of it overall. Once again, it was something very predictable. For instance, uh, Meteora, you know, staying behind and living with our main character, Sota, and all that. Meteora, just having her lose her powers and stuff, like, and make a story and titling it Recreators. Just all these little plot threads and stuff. It's something that many of us have kind of already theorized would happen for the story. However, that does not mean that this episode, you know, the final episode was bad. Just because, in some ways, it was very predictable. Because it's not like the writers of the series was really trying to hide that aspect of what they wanted to do. I feel like, at the end of the day, what the series was really for was to be, like, a message. Uh, to the audience and fans of anime or manga or any form of literature and to realize what is put into works and what, you know, the writers or whatever, what they have to go through when they're writing certain things when it comes to plot twists or characters, they have to look to the audience and see if they really accept where they're going with their series. And without the backing of the audience, they cannot progress as a creator. And that's kind of what the story was trying to showcase, like, without someone's constant support, it's just not possible to continue to do something like this, write stories, do art, or whatever, and it's really amazing. I, I feel like that was, like, the main end result of this series, what it was really about, is like, a message towards people, but also towards creators that have lost their passion because they no longer have the will because either people have turned against them or, you know, their stuff is not as good as others, and they have this jealousy. Maybe this series was a message for all of those creators to realize, hey, look, you know, wake up, you know, don't give up on your passion, don't give up on your dream, continue moving forward and all that, and eventually that spark will relight once again, and I feel like that's what the message of this was, but getting off of that, though, I'll talk about messages and themes and all of that later on in this video, this is the final episode, and it gives us a lot of closure, and all honesty, I am very happy with the closure of this finale. There, there was a lot of characters, all like the little threads and all that were tied in perfectly, and then they all went off into their respective worlds or universes, and they moved on, and only, you know, Meteora, she was the only one that was left behind. Now, with everything in this epilogue, I'm actually satisfied with pretty much everything besides anything that addresses Magane. Because, like I said, this is a perfect closure episode. It, it basically closes off the story of Recreators, and you can be satisfied with it. However, there's one little loose plot thread that is not answered at all. Which leaves me wondering, why? Magne. Magne was not in this finale. Now, you could theorize and guess what she could possibly do, or what she is doing, or whatever. But regardless, though... We don't really know, because it wasn't, you know, actually stated. There was no closure to Magane's character, which is very strange, because for the final episode to be dedicated to the, you know, the creations and going back to the worlds or whatever, it makes you wonder why, you know, why for a re- like, why is Magane not in this episode? For it to have everybody saying their goodbyes and stuff, at the very least, we would think that we would get to see Magane doing her own thing way off around the world or something, but we didn't even see an image of her. We didn't even get to see what she was doing after time has passed, so it makes you wonder, why not? And, you know, for a fact, the writers didn't forget Magane, because at the final part of the episode, when this little picture was drawn by Sota, you, you see actually Magane on the side. And so we know for a fact that Sota didn't forget Magane. So, we know for a fact that she still is relevant or whatever, so the question is, why wasn't she in this episode? The only thing that can really come to mind and why I think something like this was done is that most likely either the writers of the series of Recreators, they want to do some form of OVA or something or a spin-off with Magane 
after the events of Recreators, or maybe leave it open enough for a potential Season 2. Mogane as a character or creation, she is pretty broken. I mean, she's able to bend the laws of reality itself with her ability, and so what's to say that she can't bend the laws of reality to make it to where she doesn't lose her powers? Because many could speculate from this episode that there will come a time to where Mogane would lose her ability as well, thanks to, you know, Meteora, how she lost her ability, she can no longer use her magic, you know, you would assume that Mogane would have that same thing happen to her. However, we gotta remember Mogane is able to manipulate reality itself, and was also, it's thanks to her, to why everything turned out nice and well with Altier and all that, because she helped out Sota. So we know for a fact that thanks to Mogane, she can do some incredible things, and she can do things that just does not make sense whatsoever. So there is a possibility that she could still have her magic or her your power, and it's not gone at all, which could leave for a possibility for a season two or an OVA or a spinoff or something. That could potentially be a thing. And I wonder if that's the reason why the writers decide not to really focus in on her, because if the series sells well, maybe they could go and do something with that little plot thread. Because we know for a fact Mogane is not a good person. Like, okay, she's best girl, but she's not a good person. Oh, by no means is she a good person. We have seen firsthand what she has done, what she did to her creator, what she did to others. She is a psychopath. She, she kills people. And... We know for a fact she is dangerous, and even if she lost her magic, okay, let's say she doesn't have her abilities anymore, it doesn't change the fact that she is a very dangerous individual that will hurt a lot of people. And so because of that, it makes you wonder, how is that getting handled? How is that situation getting handled? Are the FBI or whatever, are they hunting them down, or hunting Mogane down to see what she's doing? That's just the questions I have. So, like I said... I feel like the writers of the series left that open for a potential season 2 OVA or whatever. I I, I don't know. I, I just feel like that's the only reason why they would forget to do something like that. Because they managed to tie up everything nice and neat with this final episode. And that was the only thing they decided to really leave out. Now besides that, let's also talk about the situation with, I guess, the closure of the series. You know, with it being finally over. So Recreators, with its final episode here... It's a series that has brought me a lot of joy. I've had a lot of fun watching this series, and it was one of those series I really look forward to every single week. I mean, it was one of those series I was actually looking really, really forward to every single week, similar to how I look forward to Boku no Hero Academia. You know how I really love Boku no Hero Academia? Well, I was also looking forward to Recreators every single week, because I just loved Recreators. I loved the music, I loved the characters, it just it was so meta. Fourth wall breaking, I was just really enjoying this series, and I know many like to pick on this series, put it down, say it's like a re-exposition, it's just a bunch of talking or whatever, and I know many want to bully this series to put it down because it just, it's a lot of talking, and not many really care about that because they want to see a bunch of action, and they don't want to actually see what the creators of the series, or the writers, what they're trying to actually emphasize, they're letting us know that this is kind of how maybe writers feel when they're working on stuff, and they kind of want to just talk to us, and the only way to do that is by being really fourth wall breaking, and that's what the series really was in the grand scheme of things. It was like a message to the audience of, you know, the fans of mini anime or manga, but in anime form, doing with their own little thing and making it kind of entertaining. So I feel like the series, it was successful. I feel like Recreators was really successful in my opinion. I don't know how the sales are. I don't know how well it's doing on Anime Strike. I mean, Anime Strike has probably hit this series pretty hard. I mean, Anime Strike is pretty bad. I mean, besides the double paywall and all of that, what's really bad about it is the fact that Anime Strike is only offered into limited select countries and all of that, not offered around the world, and so if you want to get into Recreators, obviously you just can if you live into like another country or something. So, Recreators, it did not have, I think, a lot of, I guess, popularity in terms of just getting out there and getting well known, and it really upsets me because of that, because I feel like if more people really knew about the series, this would probably have been one of the most popular series from the anime of 2017, but it didn't become that because of, you know, how Anime Strike has their whole setup, and they've also done this to many other series as well that have not become as popular as they could because of just how the system of Anime Strike works in the first place. So, I feel like it's popular, I feel like it's a solid series, I don't think it's like a perfect 10 out of 10 series, but I feel like it's a really good anime original series that actually made me very satisfied with its conclusion, but I feel like many might not want to watch this, or they might not even give it a shot, thanks to just how you can go about to access this series. Anyways, though, 
let's talk about the, like, little scenes, comedy scenes, to just funny scenes, to, you know, scenes that just have characters interacting with each other. I really love just, like, how the creations were talking to their creators throughout this episode, and they were kind of like, you know, giving them support, like, letting them know, like, hey, even though you have messed my life up beyond repair, and, you know, you've ruined my fate, or your fate itself just dictating my life, you know, I don't hold it all against you. Just make sure there's something at the end of the road that I can enjoy. And they each had their own reasons for what they wanted to say to their creators. And I love what Blitz Talker said to his creator. He's like, I don't want to be in the same world with you at all. Like, I don't even want to be in your presence. I don't want to be in this world. I mean, I'd rather be in another world you created that, you know, you're the fate or the god instead of being in the same realm as you. And I, I love how the creator of Blitz Talker was like, hey, you know, I understand or you need to understand I'm a bad person, and so I most likely might do something that could put you guys through a lot of trouble, a lot of hell to go through, and you need to understand that you're going to need to try to have the strength to overcome this. I like how straightforward that was, and how Blitz Talker realized this, and was able to kind of accept that overall. And then you have, you know, the others, like we have our Persona guys, you know, they're like, hey, you know, make sure, even though you're fate itself, and you're technically you're the reason why everyone, you know, died or whatever in the story, you're still fate. I won't blame you, because you're not necessarily necessarily the face who really caused it was the people you put in the story that actually did the act so I, I like how a lot of these characters had a lot of maturity about them but the way they talked to their creators is like this is emotional it's kind of like they were saying goodbye to their kids and another way you could take it is if creators they give life to something and that, that's how many creators think about when they write something when you're writing a book or when you're making a game or you're, you know, making any type of story or whatever, when you bring a character to life in your story, it's like you're, they're your children. They really are your children because you're putting so much time and effort and passion into them to create these characters or whatever that it's kind of like you're giving life to a whole new world. And this is something that many creators have talked about in the past. There's many subjects on it, how like when you're a writer, you're basically creating a world. And I like that. I, I just like how this was done. Just It's kind of like the creators were saying goodbye to their children, or they were happy that they got to meet their children, or their children were created. It's just very beautiful stuff. Now, besides that, we also have like little nods to things for the future of the series, or future after the series is over, like Recreator, since it's done now. We still have some hints to what's going to be going on. We know that Soda, he finally overcame his guilt and his problems he had with the past with Setsuna, and he was able to move forward and start writing and drawing again, because you see that towards the end of the episode, which makes me very happy. It shows that he has matured and he has learned from what he has done from the past, and he has tried to move forward. That's what he's clearly doing. And then you have, you know, Meteora, how she's actually starting to write her own story which titles it recreators which like i said very predictable something like that would be made or the title would be used but it was still very nice nonetheless just to see that and soda oh my god like what you doing man you you, you basically got like a a 2d waifu now 3d waifu now in your world you need to hook up with her I, i'm just soda you're, you're not doing something right if you don't hook up with her so he better end up with her I, that's all i'm saying but i mean that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things but that man better do so so with that we also have, like, you know, getting to see the after effects of, you know, Celestia and, you know, Alice after they die. We get to see what effects they have on their creators and how they will continue to write stories and how even though they died in this world, they're not necessarily gone because their stories are still there. They forever live on and they are still living on in their stories in their own world. And even though the ones they knew were gone... They know now what they need to do for their stories. They know how they need to make their stories better, what they need to improve on. Like, for instance, add, like, some world building, add coffee, you know, add books and stuff just to make it to where there's more realistic... I guess, vibes in their world or verses, and you can also see the passion with the, you know, the creator of Alice and all that in her story, you see how he's been putting so much effort into writing a really good story, he realizes it's still not enough, and he needs to go all in to make it as best as he possibly can, it's just, it's emotional stuff, because this is what writers really do, and then we got the little shout out to seeing, like, uh, Mamika and Alice meeting each other on a poster, which was like a movie or spinoff or something, you see Alice and Mamika meeting, and it was a quick image and all that towards the end of the episode, and I'm like, oh my god, like, that's legit happening, so Mamika's technically not dead as well, I mean, she's dead in the real world of recreators, but she still lives on in her story, and you have it to where Alice and Mamika are going to be able to meet once again, which just makes me 
extremely happy to see. That That's like a nice little thing to see, just Alice and Monica finally meeting up and being able to be friends once again. I, I would really love to see like a spinoff movie or something on that. I'm not even joking. I would love to see recreators have a spinoff with that and just have Alice and Monica have like a movie to themselves. Be really cool. Speaking of spinoffs, that's what this series could actually do. I could actually see recreators becoming something very interesting or popular, an expanded story with different type of verses and stuff. I mean, just imagine this, okay? In this episode, it was revealed that what really happens when they go back to the world? Do they... Do they forget everything, or do they create their own story, like New Dimension or something, like Multiverse Fury? And that's kind of what was going on there. They were discussing this. They don't really know what's going on or what will happen when, you know, the creations go back to the world, but it could be like Multiverse or something, and it makes you really wonder. I mean, there's a lot of potential here for them to expand upon the universe of recreators, even do spinoffs, for instance. Like, they can do their own solo anime. No joke. They can do their own solo anime on, like, Celestia series, or they could do one on Blitz Talker, or they could do one on or something. It'd be really cool to see something like that. I mean, just imagine if Recreators like extended itself and actually focused on these individual stories and then had something crazy happen again, like Mogane did something in Warp Reality and brought them all back or something. It'd be really cool. And speaking of that, we don't even really know how all of this began in the first place. That was not really answered completely, so it really makes you wonder what happened there. So that's about it when it comes to all of this. I feel like Recreators... It was good, it was a solid series, it has a few problems here and there, but overall, I think all of the good makes up for the bad of the series. I would love to see more, but most likely knowing how anime originals are done, we might not ever see a continuation. We might not ever see an OVA, or a spinoff, but if in some case we do, I will be there to talk about it. But until then... I love you guys, and thank you so much for watching these videos, thank you so much for supporting me while, you know, I've been reviewing Recreators, and thank you so much for leaving a comment, leaving a like on these videos throughout the entire time I've been reviewing this for the past, like, 30 plus weeks or whatever, so thank you so much, also thank you very much for everyone that has donated on Patreon, it helps me out a lot, so you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live, please be safe, chibi out.